Affinity Photo 2.6 has been updated with AI-powered selection tools. And in this video, we're going to be running through some tips to help beginners get the most out of these tools. The first tip is to break down selections with the Alt and Shift key. By the way, I just want to acknowledge that information related to this tip was brought to my attention by a few of our attentive viewers. So we want to thank them for this tip. While the object selection tools point and click workflow is a fast and intuitive way to make selections, you might have noticed that it has difficulty selecting parts of an object which may leave you disappointed. To demonstrate, let's select the eyes of this cat. As you can see, pointing the mouse right smack on the eye selects the entire cat, not just the eye, which is not what we want. And this is true no matter where you move the cursor. Well, the good news is, it turns out, Affinity did build in a mechanism to allow for selections of parts of an object, and that is by using Alt or Option and Shift key. I'll hold down the Alt key. As you can see, that breaks down the selection further. Both eyes are now correctly selected. But what if I want just the one eye I'm pointing to? You can do that as well by holding down the Shift key in addition to the Alt key. That breaks down the selection even further to smaller components. Now only the single eye is selected. To confirm the selection, I'll click the mouse button. Let's move on to another example. Let's say you want to make a selection of all the black beans in this image. Pointing anywhere within the bread selects the entire object. As such, I'll press Alt to break down the selection to smaller components. And that now allows for the selection of the banana slices. Next, I'll press both Alt and Shift. And as you can see, that allows for selecting each individual bean, which is exactly what we want. So as you can see, Affinity has built in a lot of versatility into its point and click operation. Nice job. The second tip is to know how to handle freezing problems. If you are one of those who have the system freezing when using Affinity's object selection tool, then you might be wondering why it is occurring and how to correct it. To understand the cause, let's open Affinity Photo along with the Windows Task Manager. Currently, the memory utilization is shown to be a manageable 38%. Let's open a few images. As expected, memory utilization has increased to 52%. Still not too bad. Next, let's activate the object selection tool on one of the images. And as you can see, by merely clicking on the object selection tool, memory utilization has jumped dramatically to 80%, all with just one image. Using the object selection tool on a second image raises the RAM usage to 91%. And on a third image, RAM usage is now 99%. And at that high memory utilization, you're going to find that your mouse and overall system slows to a crawl, if not freezing completely. So as you can see, the cause of the problem is the huge amount of memory resources required by the object selection tool. And without warning, all your RAM can be used up. So how do you rectify this? It's pretty simple. Just close a few tabs until the memory utilization drops to a more reasonable level. Alternatively, you can also close and reopen Affinity Photo to free up resources. The third tip is to automate local adjustments with macros. One benefit of having AI-powered select subject is now you get the ability to automate local adjustment tasks not just global adjustments. This is a game changer for speeding up your workflow. As a quick example, let's create a macro to automatically brighten the subject while darkening and reducing the saturation of the background to help make the subject really stand out. I'll start off by opening the macro dialog from the window menu. Next, I'll click the record button to begin the recording process. I'll click Select Subject. I'll increase the subject's brightness. I'll invert the selection to target the background. I'll reduce the brightness of the background. 
and the background saturation. There, the processing steps are done. I'll stop the recording. I'll save the macro by clicking the Add to Library button. I'll name the macro Process Portrait. And there you go, the macro is saved. Let's open an image to test it. I'll click the Process Portrait macro to execute it. And there you go, with just one click, a sophisticated local adjustment has been applied to both the subject and the background, and this can be extended from a single image, in this case, to multiple images in batch processing. The fourth tip is to try subtraction operations for better selections. To demonstrate this tip, let's work with this image. Let's say we want to use object selection to target the outfit of this lady. As you can see, merely pointing and clicking on the outfit does not really do the job. So what are we to do in this case? In such a situation where pointing and clicking is not working, one alternative is to work backwards. Remove from the selection to achieve a similar result. I'll switch the selection mode to subtract. As you can see, that turns the overlay red. I'll point on those areas which are not part of the outfit. There, the selection is done. I'll increase the saturation. As you can see, only the outfit is being affected by the saturation adjustment. To visually inspect the mask, you can Alt-click on the thumbnail. And as you can see, the mask is looking pretty good, all done via subtraction rather than addition. The fifth tip is to be aware of the main limitation of Affinity's AI selection tools. While AI selection is a great addition to Affinity's array of selection tools, to get the most out of it, one must be aware of its main limitation, the fact that both Affinity's Select Subject and Object Selection are limited in its ability to create a well-fitting selection for complex or intricate edges, such as those present in hair or fur. As such, it is critical to know how to use Affinity's basic refinement tools to mitigate this problem. As an example, let's try to select this squirrel. As you can see, the quality of edge selection is pretty poor. No problem, let's use the refine brush to fix it. And just like that, we get a pretty accurate selection with not much extra effort. Although it would have been nice, for Affinity to take care of this in one go. So there you have it, five tips to help you get the most out of Affinity's AI selection tools. Let me know if I missed any useful tip, write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.